Hi, everyone. My name is Alexandra Whitaker. I'm a global product lead at Google in San Francisco, working on app advertising, but more specifically, how mobile web and app fit better together. Now, who in this audience has a website? And who has an app? I'm pretty sure that this applies to most of you. At Google, we call these businesses hybrid as they invest in both web and app. Think of retail, travel, food delivery, fitness, online education, etc. I do tend to work less with gaming advertisers though, as they are mostly app only. So today I'm here to tell you more about mobile holistically, including both web and app. Before we begin, I'd like to give you a little introduction. I love kite surfing. I used to be afraid of the sea, the ocean, and extreme sports. I would just go to the gym to do fitness. But then I decided to get over my fears and learn kite surfing. It was hard and scary at the beginning, but now I just can't live without it. It has unlocked so many benefits for me. Health, strength, mental happiness, and I met new friends and my boyfriend. Now, you may think, why is she telling us this? Well, it's kind of the same for advertisers and combining web and app. Having an aligned mobile approach by combining web and app strategies, it's a hard thing to do. Similarly, setting up deep links to drive users from web to app, it may seem complicated at first, but once you jump in, it will unlock so many benefits for you, just like kite surfing did for me. Research from Forrester and Google studies show that company mobile experiences have seen three digit growth in mobile conversions. We have many cases on our blog called Think with Google that showcase this with multiple brands globally. This really shows the value of investing in optimizing the mobile experience. So what we should really understand here is that the lines between web and app continue to blur. Users continuously switch between platforms. 45% of shopping sessions include more than one transition between a site and an app. And people don't buy on the first visit usually. On average, a mobile shopping session contains visits to an app and or a mobile site. Visitors of optimized sites are three times more likely to download the app. A uniform and great experience everywhere is important for acquiring loyal customers. Do you see yourselves in this? I certainly do. We have so much power with our smartphones. We can get what we want when we want, and we want it fast. We switch between web and app environments, and that's why businesses need to be present on both. Now, what all this means is that today's consumer journeys are more complex than ever. Users expect brands to anticipate their needs and make it easy for them to get what they want, no matter how they engage. Adidas saw that their users were click quickly turning towards mobile to engage with their brand. They had underinvested in mobile e-commerce efforts and knew that in order to influence digital conversions, they needed to prioritize investing in fast and engaging experiences. Adidas unified their digital commerce strategy and teams around common KPIs and invested in progressive web apps, UX best practices, and site speed improvements. Today, more than 60% of traffic goes to mobile and they saw an uplift in sales revenue. Brands see business uplift from investing in both web and app technologies. Let's take Spotify as an example. So a bit of context here. Back in 2017, there was no way to listen to Spotify on mobile web. They had a desktop web app that supported users on Windows, Mac, and Chrome OS, but no option on mobile. And frankly, they were unsure if that should change. Things seemed to go pretty well. 
they had been growing fast and saw that their native apps were posting impressive retention figures. But every day, millions of people visited artists, playlists, and album pages on the mobile website and weren't able to play music because of app download friction. Was this friction inhibiting their growth potential? To explore this question in more depth, they dived into their user insights and got to the realization that they should have a comprehensive mobile web experience that encompasses both web and app, especially for users with low storage space who can't download the app. Not having a complete mobile experience was hurting their growth potential. We helped them face this challenge by experimenting with progressive web apps and native apps. The results were impressive. They saw a 54% increase in day one play, a sustained 14% increase in active users all the way through day 60. So they first feared that launching a mobile web experience would cannibalize app downloads and hurt retention. But it turned out to be the opposite. When people have access to a robust mobile web experience, they are actually more likely to download their app. Uh, we have seen some incredible trends. I'm going to tell you a little story. My boss told me that his parents used to go to Costco every Saturday to get their groceries for the week. But with the coronavirus pandemic, they switched to getting their groceries delivered from the Instacart app. And they're starting to get used to it, and it works pretty well for them. As this is becoming their new norm, you wonder, will they revert going back to Costco? Probably not. And this is digital transformation. A lot of people now have shifted to mobile and apps in particular for multiple needs. Let me share some stats. As the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted life and businesses these past few months, we've talked to many of our retail customers and their concerns and asked how Google could help. We're continuing to hear from these customers about the challenges they're facing, especially with closures or restrictions on their physical stores. People are looking for information they can trust, and they're going online to find it. Foot traffic has become online traffic, as people shelter at home, with 43% of global consumers shopping online more frequently. It's important to be consistent across channels. E-commerce retailers have an opportunity to drive sales by reconnecting with app users. According to a global app survey, 60% of survey respondents are likely to make an in-app purchase in an in-app they downloaded during the pandemic. So it is in a brand's best interest to ensure users have seamless experiences to turn a potentially short-term app install into a loyal and active relationship. Apps and sites are uniquely positioned to maintain a consistent dialogue as dynamics shift. And, Apps account for 70% of mobile sales for retailers who invest in mo both mobile web and shopping app. Now more than ever, people are turning to apps to stay healthy, productive, connected, and informed. In fact, worldwide, average weekly time spent in apps grew 20% year over year in Q1 2020, suggesting apps are making a difference in how people navigate through this changing time plus 60% increase in content streamed. Think of Netflix, Amazon Prime, or Disney Plus. 40% increase in fitness downloads. Think of Nike Training Club, Fitbit. Which one have you been using? And then 100% increase in searches for education apps. Think of Masterclass, Duolingo, Udemy. While so much has been going on during these times of digital transformation, and there's a lot of complexity to navigate. We've been publishing some blog posts and videos to help out. Feel free to look through these resources. They provide tips and insights to help businesses with their mobile strategies. We most recently launched this blog post on the left, new ways to put your customers first and achieve your marketing objectives, sharing some of our new mobile launches that I'll be talking about more in this presentation. Now, we know that focusing on the user and creating a great mobile experience 
across web and apps can drive growth. But it's not always as simple as that. Designers, developers, and product teams may have the best intentions, but often are not empowered by leadership to do what is best for the user. So how do brands achieve that? Creating a great user experience must be supported by the right organizational design and culture. As we work to make fast, seamless, and personalized experiences on mobile, the single largest impediment is organizational design and culture. Ask yourself, is your company ready for this? Here's a quote from the CIO of Foot Locker, talking about how difficult it is to work through organizational silos. Changing a technology or changing the paradigm around marketing is a much easier part of digital transformation than the internal organizational readiness and shifting enterprise thinking. Culture change is much harder, and that's the strongest muscle that we had to build. Executive leadership needs to invest in the right technologies and get buy-in across the organization. Marketing and analytics teams should be continuously measuring and optimizing for new revenue opportunities. Developers need to be up to speed on the latest mobile development tools and techniques. Designers should be intimately familiar with mobile UX best practices and work closely with developers to create the best experience. That, of course, comes with establishing specific mobile KPIs and constant monitoring to access optimal mobile performance. I'm now going to speak of my personal experience working on a product team. When you're a product manager, you tend to be very focused on the product, but you also have to be aware of how hard it is to sell your products through and get them implemented due to these organizational silos. This is one of the biggest challenges my team has been facing. We want to get our products out there, but we're faced with slow adoption due to organizational challenges, mostly on our advertiser side. I also recently had a meeting with Alex Austin, the CEO of Branch. They're also working on deep linking solutions, and he told me that this is their number one challenge to drive adoption. It's hard to get to all the right people. Research from McKinsey and company shows that user-first companies stay successful by incorporating the following ingredients. One, analytical leadership, driving design with the same rigor as revenues and costs. Two, no silos, breaking down the walls between different design departments. Three, user-centric design in everyone's responsibility. And four, development is de-risked by continuously listening, testing, and iterating with end users. And leadership is committed to making this happen right across the business. Let's take a quick pause. Does your business have these ingredients? This definitely seems to be a topic of top of mind. I mean, I was scrolling through LinkedIn last weekend and came across this article from Harvard as well. This article again highlights the complexity of breaking down organizational walls for more horizontal, cross-functional relationships. A quote in there from a senior partner in the leading consulting firm. You know you should swim farther to catch a bigger fish, but it is a lot easier to swim in your own pond and catch a bunch of small fish. However, it is proven that companies who have figured this out are seeing success from it with employees performing better and gaining greater customer loyalty. We put together this playbook to help any organization that wants to transform its mobile presence to benefit the user. We outline principles from the realm of change management and tailor them to mobile programs. You can use these techniques, tactics, and tools to tackle a complete user experience overhaul. Feel free to read it and share with your teams by going to this URL here or searching the Mobile First Transformation Handbook. Moving on, you must be wondering, 
how does the product team at Google think about this, trying to encourage the combination of web and app while facing these challenges we spoke about? Or are you thinking about how this applies to the company you work at? Or do you face similar challenges in your role? As this is the product school, I'm going to talk about how we, the product team at Google, have been approaching these challenges. And I hope you can find some of this useful. First of all, let me reassure you, this has been a long process, mainly over the past five years, trying to come up with a cohesive mobile strategy and narrative. Google also has organizational silos, and the product teams tend to focus on their swim lane. A few. One, top leadership's involvement to help unblock barriers. Two, talking to many customers to really understand their needs to drive value and their main pain points on mobile. Three, working cross-functionally across different product teams, but also various functions from engineering to PMs, go-to-market teams, tech support and sales. It's important to regularly meet and align KPIs. Four, build internal tools first as a stopgap while we work on perfectioning the external tools. With sales teams using our internal tools, they've been able to provide us feedback on what is working and what isn't. For example, my top focus is on deep linking. We have internal tools that Googlers can use to troubleshoot and check deep link coverage. Last but not least, build frameworks to make the end goals clearer. It is so much easier to drive progress when you know what fits where and how to move towards the North Star. Let me share some specifics. It is important to align our products with our customers' marketing and business objectives. Always think about what the customer needs, get that market feedback, and then build the products accordingly. Here, for example, we decided to explore what happens after the ad click. As we're talking about app and web, we listed all the top initiatives to drive better mobile UX for app and web side by side. For example, GPay, side speed, deep linking. You quickly realize that running both in parallel is super important. We're not talking about app vs web, but app and web better together. The more you work towards this in parallel, the better user experiences you can provide. Here's also some of the thinking we've been applying to our strategy. We came up with this absolute maturity curve as we understand that our customers are in different stages of the product life cycle. The key questions we ask, do you have an app? Do you have enough installs? Do you have a measurement SDK in your app? Do you have deep links? Based on where customers are at, we have the relevant product and features for that stage. Once you have all of those, you've reached the most advanced stage of app maturity. And it really comes in that order. For instance, there's not much point investing in deep links if you don't have an app with a significant user base and an SDK to measure the app activity. We've seen that advertisers who reach the advanced stage are getting the most ROI from their app and marketing spend. It's just so important to invest in apps. As alluded before, it is essential to have frameworks, like that it's clearer to align on common goals and build the right products. As user journeys span across both mobile sites and apps, and it's important to give users a great experience on both. What exactly does that mean? Well, when users land on your site or app, first impressions matter. Get fast and stay fast. If you don't deliver what people want quickly, they will leave and find someone else that will. When they browse, make it seamless for users to navigate and complete key actions so you can convert more visitors into customers. When they return, 
deliver a personalized and relevant experience. And so the product team has, at Google has been building features that fit in these buckets, fast, seamless, and personalized. I'll give an example of each. Help people get what they want faster. We recently launched a revamped version of the Test My Site tool. As the stakes are high on mobile, if you don't give people what they want quickly, they'll take their business elsewhere. In fact, we recently found that for retail sites, improving your site load time by 0.1 second can help you improve conversion rates by 8%. Test My Site has been an important tool for helping diagnose site speed and providing custom tips on how to make it faster. We recently updated the tool to provide specific recommendations on how you can improve your mobile site beyond speed and deliver more personalized and seamless experiences. Then, that second bucket, deliver more engaging and helpful ad experiences. Many marketers already use feeds and display, shopping and local campaigns to quickly upload and showcase products in their ads. With more product images directly in your ad, consumers are able to easily and seamlessly find what they're shopping for. We're now working on rolling out feeds in app campaigns. Wish, an e-commerce company, used feeds to display diverse products from its marketplace. Wish also enabled deferred deep linking, which gave new app users a smoother onboarding experience from app install straight to the item they saw in the ad. So here's a specific example on how this works. If a new user taps on a Wish ad for running shoes, she will be directed to her app store to install the Wish app. After installing and opening the app for the first time, she would automatically land on the running shoes product page to learn more and make a purchase. Since adopting feeds and deferred deep linking, Wish has seen a 105% increase in purchases from its app. Wish's head of growth marketing said, these features have made our app more discoverable and appealing to customers. Finally, that third bucket I spoke about, make it easier for your customers to take action. Loyal customers stick with brands that make it easy for them to get things done. For customers who already have your app installed, deep linking lets them get to the relevant page in the app without having to log in or re-enter information. Last year at Google Marketing Live, also known as GML, we announced app deep linking from search, display, and shopping ads. In the coming months, we'll be rolling out deep linking from YouTube, hotel, Gmail, and discovery ads. On average, deep linked ad experiences drive 2x the conversion rate. Let's say someone is watching a cooking video on YouTube and sees a discount for a two hour grocery delivery. Once she taps on the ad, she's taken directly to a page in the store's app to place an order. Rakuten Ishiba, a Japanese e-commerce company, found that enabling deep linking helped its loyal customers take action on ads directly in the brand's app, resulting in 4x mobile purchases and 3x conversions. Now about that, let's talk about this more. I'd like to spend the last section talking about deep linking, given the importance of it, yet the small adoption. Hope you're all still with me. What we should really understand here, in fact, is that the lines between web and app continue to blur. Users continuously switch between platforms 45% of shopping sessions include more than one transition between a site and an app. And people usually don't buy on the first visit. On average, a mobile shopping session contains at least six visits between an app and a mobile site. If you have a mobile app, app deep linking is a great way to reduce friction when bringing app users back into your app. Users tapping links have one goal in mind, to get the content they want to see. 
Deep linking allows to take users who have your app installed to a link specific content directly in your app rather than the mobile website. And this provides such a better user experience. I mean, if you have the app on your device, that means you're probably familiar with the UX, it is sleek, and all your information is already in there, your address, credit card details, and so on. And this allows for a much quicker and easier conversion process. In this example on this slide, the user who has the auto app installed does a search on Google and sees a shopping ad for a leather jacket. When she clicks on the ad, she is taken straight into the relevant product page app rather than a mobile website. Advertisers who enable this see up to 2x increase in conversion rates when app users click on mobile search, shopping, or display ads and open in the app via the mobile website. Ozone is one example of a customer who has seen a great boost to their ad performance after enabling app deep linking. They saw a 54% boost of conversions, a 33% increase in ROI, and 4x more purchases from their campaigns. And I quite like this quote. I'll let you read it. So how does this work? To ensure success, think of it as a set of features. It's not just about deep linking, but also tracking those app conversions and bidding to them. For deep linking, we support app links on Android and universal links on iOS. These are the industry standard. There are many different types of deep links in the ecosystem, like redirects, custom schemes, third party links. But we support these two types only, mainly because it's the right thing to do for the user. But then, when you have deep links, but if you don't have app conversion tracking, that's a problem. We've seen advertisers drive users into the app, but then not capturing all that value. It is very important to set up app conversion tracking, either in a GA for Firebase or your app attribution provider, such as AppsFlyer or Adjust, to ensure you properly measure your marketing activity. If not, we call this the leaky bucket. Finally, once you have the basic plumbing in place with deep linking and conversion tracking, the ultimate component is bidding to boost performance. By enabling smart bidding, Google's algorithms will bid higher to users who have the app installed on their device for better experiences. What's the benefit for the advertiser? Our data shows significant uplift for advertisers who have adopted these three components. That said, across those three dimensions, the key benefits of app deep linking are deliver a more seamless mobile ad experience, Direct your app customers from your ads to where they can easily complete their desired action in your app. Close the loop on mobile conversions. Define and measure important conversions for both your mobile website and your app. Help improve mobile ROI. Optimize for performance using conversion data from your mobile website and app. Back to those 2x conversions I spoke about earlier. So as you can see, there are benefits both for the user and the advertiser. As I touched upon, there is confusion in the market due to the deep linking ecosystem. Here's a bit more about why we only support app links and universal links and no other types such as redirects. First off, it is important to highlight that they are the industry standard across iOS and Android. They allow you to use our key features. They are more secure than other types of deep link. So let me share some examples. Uh, some other company can claim your custom scheme. Or when it comes to redirects, we can't ensure where the user is going to land. Finally, what I like about these is that they don't break, allowing for that frictionless user experience. The URL remains the same, meaning that if the user does not have the app, they will be directed into the mobile website. If they have the app, they'll be directed into the app. We very recently launched the Ad Destination Report at the end of June. 
To give you better insight into where consumers are landing and converting from your ads, you can use ad destination reporting in Google Ads. It basically allows advertisers to get a better sense of where their consumers are ending up, app or web, how they are converting from ads, and which environment is performing best. You may, for example, see that your app drives higher ROI, so you may want to shift more focus to it. Having a product roadmap is a core component for product teams, as you're all probably with. It allows to get people excited about what's to come. We're currently working on launching smart bidding on product listing ads, allowing to boost performance on shopping ads. If the algorithm detects that the user has the app installed, it will bid higher. Then deep link expansion. Last year at Google Marketing Live, we announced app deep linking from search, display, and shopping ads. In the coming months, we'll be rolling out deep linking from YouTube, hotel, Gmail, and discovery ads to make sure it's consistent across the board. Then deep linking external tools. At the beginning of this presentation, I spoke about using internal tools before making them external. We plan to launch a deep link coverage tool and a deep link validation tool in the UI to simplify the adoption for our advertisers. And last but not least, in this new mobile era in which we talk about unifying web and app, we'll be launching many more features to measure the two holistically. I heard so many advertisers saying that they struggle with web and app measurement and they do crazy workarounds to track them separately and then stitch it all together for a more comprehensive view. And we really want to help with that. I'd like to flag that planning ahead is essential, especially for retail. Q4 is the most important quarter of the year for retailers across the world with events like Singles Day, Diwali, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas. As businesses want to avoid risks of bugs and features breaking during that primary time, retailers need to have all the plumbing in place in Q3, hence the urgency to work on this now. We've seen that the impact of web and app together is huge for retail, hence this is an opportunity not to miss. In closing, let me recall the key takeaways from today. Understand your customers and what mobile services best meet their needs. In formulating your web and app strategy, understand your customers and how they transition across web and app. Be nimble and keep testing. Be willing to experiment and test where possible. Your app business can benefit from PWAs and vice versa, as we learned from the Spotify case study. Watch for trends in the marketplace. Imagine you're a hotel chain and you didn't see Airbnb coming. Or you're a taxi business and you didn't see app-based Uber coming. Be on the lookout how mobile technologies disrupt existing business models and giving tech-savvy companies a competitive edge. Plan ahead. For instance, get ready for that holiday season before it's too late. Break organizational silos. Break those walls to align your organization to your mobile ambitions. Last but not least, if you're interested in more content about this topic, feel free to check out these two YouTube mobile on air videos. My colleague Chamal talks about building a great experience across web and app, going more into the UX specifics. And my colleague Tamim talks about the business value of an app, specifically for hybrid advertisers. It was a pleasure being with you here today. I hope you could acquire some valuable insights. Speak soon and stay safe. Thank you.